Tonight we got Marty Salmon, keyboard player, buddy guy, Doug, the Arkansas Razorback, McDonald, and Mike, Michael Crystal. Oh. So anyways, who wants to start this off? How about you, Marty? Well, we you don't know what we're going to talk about, ask? but uh, we have an album coming out that Michael's producing, and Doug and I are playing along with Rick King on congas. And uh, we want to feature, we're doing this thing about from Chicago to New Orleans and trace like a path from those two cities. Those are the two cities that probably influence me the most. And Doug, being from Arkansas, has a, a, a whole wide range of the language he brings into it. So maybe we want to talk about where he came from, and, and he's the most historical figure on this album. So so this is, this is my friend, the Razorback, Arkansas Razorback, man. This guy and I go way back. So why don't you talk about where, how you started playing guitar, man? Okay. Well, um, the very first day I got interested in music, and I was going to school. I started school at the age of six years old. And the teacher had an old antique piano. And she would play, and you know, like every morning when the school kids come to school, they'd play all the little songs and stuff. And uh, I loved her, man. Okay, and I began to watch her play piano, and then I wanted to be a piano. So I started messing around with the piano trying to play it. But it seemed like it, was, it wasn't really my, you know, make so that I wound up trying to be a harmonica player. I tried to blow a harmonica. That wasn't right. Then I began to watch the old Grand Arthur show. But I didn't watch it, I'm sorry. I heard it on the radio. There wasn't no TV back then. <laughs> so you listen to the Grand Arthur show. Then they have, they have a, they tend to bring some shows there in a the little town. And set up a little bandstand thing in the street back. And a lot of those uh, guys from Nashville come there and play. And I was beginning to watch those guys who were playing the music back in that time. And that's when I became to be in this guitar. And uh, I bought my first guitar when I was in uh, Arkansas. With, like, I had people fired off. <laughs> a guitar cost fired off back in that time. And uh, I started messing around with it. And I, like I said again, I watched this to a lot of the Grand uh, Rock and all the guitar players inspired me. We finally got a television. Then I began to watch Gene Autry play. He would ride his horse. You like Gene Autry? Pitching, like the pitching, come on. It all makes sense now. Oh, it does. <laughs> let, let me finish. When, when, when the pitcher started coming on, he would be riding the horse, playing the guitar after the trip. Whatever you say. Oh, yeah, while riding the horse. And then I said, oh, wow, guitar. And I, I put the harmonica on the wheel. I, I, I still like the, the keyboard piano. And I was filling up the guitar. And then I started plucking on the guitar. But I really got it together when I came to Chicago huh? in 1950. And 1950 when I came to How good were you on the uh, harmonica, the harp uh, I was huffing and puffing, but I, it takes a lot of wind to blow harmonica. <laughs> and uh, the first song I really played was a song that did by Sunday when we did more in the school. Good morning, let's go. Yeah, and they they was awesome. tonight too. And I really couldn't play it well, but you know, just some part of the introduction, I could get it. But it took so much wind for that. And that's what made me just say, okay, I don't want to fool with this. So the guitar came with the handle for me. So, Doug, you, were, you were talking about school. Was it like one of those one room schoolhouses? Uh, or just one room. One room? Yes. So like, totally like, when room. did you go to school? Did you go to school early in the in the day? Uh, early in the day. Not early in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Very early in the morning, right? Because you had to what? You had to go work, right? Uh, we only work in a certain season. Right, yeah. A certain season that you school out, that you work or whatever. So how many kids were in the schoolhouse? Um, it was, uh, I would say maybe 50 or 60. Right, and they have one teacher for one, all one teacher, one for, teacher all the wow. for all the kids for fifty or sixty kids. Uh -huh. um, one they, they came from all over the area. Came from all over. Wow. Yeah, they have no bus. Everybody walks twenty miles. We walk. We walk twenty oh, we miles. We loved it back in that time. Don't tell me it was uphill both ways. It, it didn't matter. We just had the energy, <laughs> fun, and we just loved to walk. They use the word country miles. That's what we that's what we call it, country miles. Country miles. Country yeah. miles. Yeah. Twenty miles or whatever it did bother. Did, did some of your friends play musical instruments? Uh we were two or three guys that played, they didn't make a career. Right. No, they, 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 what they really did they influenced me, got me started. And this uh, two other guys, matter of fact, still live down there. Wow. They don't even, they don't fool guitar anymore. Uh, but they had for me though. But they, they, they learned that I, I took a fuzzle. Tell, tell us a story. RJ was mentioning, uh, RJ said you told him that you used to hide your guitar out in the field so you could play your guitar. Uh, well, 
years we done that too, and plus I made a guitar. So we used to make guitars, you know, it wasn't right. really a guitar. Is you take about maybe four or five nails and nail them in the wall upside the moon, or wood right. houses, yeah. some houses, just whatever. I, it's hard to describe. But anyway, we, we nail them nails in there, and we get wide. Just, uh, just plain wide, not no real hard wide. Just wide like screen wide. Yeah, right. Wide. And we would tie it around the nail, we'd take a Pittman can or any kind of can that you would like to buy a can for. But if you can, we put it on that thing and draw it tight. Oh. And we draw it tight. And the only thing you can hear is the plucking sound makes you think of a guitar. You gotta really want to play and like put that kind of effort. Oh, you know, that's, how, that's, that's, that's how we did it back then. So you actually just nail it into the wall. Yeah. And then you put the wire down. And you, yeah. you put the wire down, and you want you put a can, like I said, a can maybe shaped like this, or maybe it's a like this. You put it up in the wire and draw it up tight. Right. When you draw it up, you got it tight, and you can pluck and hit it. Straight. So you can tune that? No, you can tune it, you just get a oh. pluck sound. Okay, a pluck sound. Yeah, that's like, what you started sound. playing? Yeah. <laughs> wow. What, what brought you to Chicago? Like, uh, how old were you when you decided to go to Chicago? Uh, I don't know, uh, like about 13 or 14. When you came to Chicago, you were 13 or 14? I was 13 or 14. By yourself? Uh, my brother. Wow, okay. So what's that, about 56, 57, 58, yeah. So, so you're really, um, you know, All right. 50, 50 years now, ago. Wow. Did oh, yeah. you, huh? How did you get your name, the Arkansas Razorback? Uh, Were you already you know, in I, Chicago I and somebody gave you that name? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good stuff. Let me tell you about that. Okay, that was during the year of, uh, let's see, let me get it correctly here. It's 77, I believe. Was 19 I was playing with uh, Fenton Robinson. He's passing me. Fenton Robinson. He was doing a lot of work in uh, Springfield at the college. So, I think it was Sigma State College. Yeah, that's the name. I can't pronounce it too well. He was one of the biggest colleges in Springfield. I think it was Sigma State. And he was teaching that. Going from room to room in the college teaching, teaching music. So they asked him to bring one of his, each one of his members, like the drummer, the bass player, the guitar. Right. Okay, so one week, one week he took the bass player. They did the little, little, little thing. Then the next week he brought his, his drum. And the next week he brought his guitar. And that's how that came from. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff in Springfield like that. So I tell, I tell everyone, Doug is is um, he's probably the greatest rhythm guitar player that I ever played with, and I I played for a living. I played a lot. Um, how do you learn how to play rhythm guitar, Doug? Uh, well, really, I learned to play rhythm guitar by you know, when guys hired me to you know, set guitar, and I got into it like that because really I didn't want to be a rhythm guitar. I always wanted to be the lead guitar. Right. But then after I got you know, get hired, we got people. Finn Robinson, or Lil Max Simmons, or a whole bunch of them different guys that hired me to even play guitar. And then I just got the rhythm playing down. How about Jimmy Reed? Tell us about playing with well, Jimmy Well, with Reed. Jimmy, I wasn't really playing. We just did a recording. You did a recording? We did a Jimmy recording with Jimmy Reed. Yeah. recording with Jimmy Reed? Yeah. That was a 68. Something that's still out? Is still out I got to find it. You know, I don't know where that could be. You might go to the record shop and find it. But it was the year 1968. We did on Al Smith recording. Which he, he passed away years ago. So we can, I've been wanting to go find it. What's the name of the recording? Uh, the guy that, uh, that, he, that recorded Jimmy at that time, that was Al Smith. And, uh, that was during the time with Brunswick, uh, down there on Michigan. You know, uh, chess record? Yeah, chess record. The chess record was there at that time too. But they was sort of like going down. Uh -huh. you know, what about? After chess players, yeah, they were. They brought brothers and them opened it back up. And they kept on trying to hold it up, but it kept going down. Because he sold it by 68 or 69. Right, that's what we're talking about, the year 68 or 69.